Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Keystone Seminar in the, the Summer B term uh, of 2016. Um, this is in fact the uh, first time the Keystone Seminar has been offered online. Uh, I appreciate all of your uh, willingness to uh, take this class and hope that it's a positive experience for you. Um, the purpose of this uh, introductory lecture is to sort of go over the syllabus and make sure that um, uh, everything is clear. Uh, the syllabus, of course, will be posted on uh, Canvas uh, on the course uh, in the course site, um, and so you can refer to it. Uh, and you can certainly, if you have questions, email me. Um, I am uh, Dr. John Young, um, Associate Professor of History. You can see my instructor information here on the syllabus. Um, the office phone number uh, is there. I will be in and out of my office this summer. Uh, you can certainly attempt to call me. Um, the best way to communicate with me, though, is via email, uh, jyoung1 at flagler.edu. Uh, the course itself, of course, is required uh, of all uh, Flagler students. Um, and uh, it is writing intensive. Um, it is uh, three credit hours. And of course, this class is going to be conducted online. Uh, the course description. Uh, you can see here. Let me just read it and then I'll uh, discuss a couple of the concepts here. Uh, this high impact course develops students' capacities to forge cross disciplinary connections, reflect critically on their core values and beliefs, and it fosters deep learning. As a writing intensive course, it builds upon and complements first year learning communities and serves as a bridge between the first and second years. This course is taught by faculty from a wide range of disciplines. Uh, I am a historian, um, and so I am uh, uh, from one of the uh, faculties listed there, um, though this has been taught by faculty, I think, from just about every department on campus uh, at one time or another. Um, a couple of important concepts here that we'll be discussing uh, throughout the course. Uh, first of all, this notion of cross-disciplinary connections. Um, we can see here, let me highlight that. Uh, cross-disciplinary connections. Uh, that is, this course does not find its home in any one discipline. Uh, there will be discussion here that comes from history. Uh, I am a historian, so that comes naturally for me. Uh, but we will also draw from, you know, the disciplines of uh, literary criticism or the humanities. Um, uh, certainly from the social sciences, uh, from anthropology and sociology and political science, uh, and uh, some, you know, sort of interdisciplinary things in the social sciences. Uh, there will be times when we discuss uh, something that comes from the, the natural sciences or the hard sciences. Um, and, uh, and so this is, um, sorry for the notifications here. Uh, anyway, hopefully that's not too distracting. Uh, so this this course tries to help us, as it says, forge these connections between disciplines. Uh, second purpose is to reflect critically. Now, the word critical here is important. Uh, you may have heard, uh, I'm sure you have uh, at times, the term critical analysis and a discussion of why we do general education, uh, the purposes of a college education in general. Um, and, and so it's important to understand what we mean by critical analysis. Uh, a critic, uh, and you may recognize different kinds of critics in the world. There are film critics and sports critics and political critics uh, and uh, restaurant critics and, and so forth and so on, right? Um, the job of a critic is to express an opinion, um, an informed opinion, though. A uh, critic will study, you know, whatever the issue is, hopefully at least, if the critic is uh, worth his or her salt, uh, will study the issue, um, will study the, you know, the film or the restaurant or the uh, political situation or whatever it is, uh, and have an in-depth knowledge of it and then form an opinion from that research or that exploration. Well, the thing that, now, now your job in this class is to become a critic. Okay? A critic of what? Well. Uh, as it says here, some of our core values and beliefs. Um, this course will encounter, um, will analyze, will confront some of the basic texts that make up our 
political and social and cultural system in uh, Western civilization and in the United States in particular. Uh, we're going to be talking about Enlightenment thought, for instance, reading some of the works of uh, key Enlightenment thinkers like John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, um, talking a little bit about kind of fundamental concepts that make up our society, property, equality, uh, things like this. Also ideas about our own identity and its connection with the concept of place. Uh, all of these things, I think, if we were to analyze ourselves, are important to us. Um, if we are products of the American system, of Western civilization, uh, these are things that we will have encountered and, and probably formed some notion about. It is our job in this class to reflect critically on those things. As a result, uh, this course fosters deep learning. That is, it's not just a, let, let me, tell me the answer so I can study for the test kind of class. Uh, this class is about reflecting on things deeply. On th uh, it's, it's a class about thinking, uh, learning how to think. Um, now, this class is also writing intensive, and so it builds upon, as it says, the uh, first year learning communities. Um, I think that these, uh, the purpose of these should dovetail nicely here. Uh, and, you know, you're in the summer, I, I assume, between your first and second years, and so this is definitely a bridge course here. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, uh, if you have questions about any of these concepts, feel free to, feel free to bring it up on the discussion boards uh, or email me personally. Um, I look forward to engaging these issues with you. Now, the learning outcomes, the reasons why this class is being taught, uh, the sorts of things that... Uh, the instructor, uh, the administrators, all those who are invested in this course hope that you will gain from this is, well, let's look at some of these. An appreciation for fundamental human questions. Well, that sounds really grand, right? And it is, uh, to some extent. What is it to be human? Well, that's a big question, right? Um, and there are categories within the human race that we will explore in this class, ideas of poverty and privilege, for instance, and ideas of race, uh, and how those um, challenge the fundamental assumptions we have about place and identity and property and equality and uh, all of these things that uh, the Western experiment has invested in. How shall I live? Now, that doesn't mean, you know, should I live in an apartment or a house? Should I live in a city or in the country? Uh, it's how shall I conduct my life given the knowledge that I have received? What should I believe? Now, this class is not intended necessarily to um, try to debunk any beliefs that uh, students here, or, uh, or the professor for, for that matter, may hold. But it does ask us to question our assumptions that undergird those beliefs. We may decide, after completing this course, that what we've believed all along is in fact valid and we can continue to believe those things. Or we may decide to revise our beliefs, to uh, construct a new system of belief. Um, if you find yourself, sorry, my friends are posting on Facebook here, uh, uh, if you find yourself questioning your beliefs, if you find yourself thinking about your beliefs at the very least, then this course is doing the work that it's intended to do. Um, now, uh, this course is also uh, very much a course about learning how to read closely and analyze critically and write effectively. These are the basic skills of uh, a general education uh, or a, a liberal arts education, something that we will talk more in depth about uh, in this class. Um, also, an appreciation for the concept of place. And if that term is a bit nebulous at this point, then hopefully it will become more clear as time goes on. Um, but we're going to talk about what place means, what it means to feel connected to a place. Um, we're going to look at uh, some examples from texts from the ancient world, from, uh, uh, from more recent times, uh, to discuss the, the notion of place and how place helps us form our identity. Um, this will 
help us, I think, understand our connection or what, what our connection should be to the legacy of the place that we currently reside. Um, uh, at least for these four years that you're going to college, you are you know, going to be resident for at least some months out of the year in St. Augustine uh, and at Flagler College. And so what are we supposed to do with the place that we currently inhabit? Um, what should our connection be to that place? What is our responsibility there? Uh, other iterations of this course, the, um, the, the in-class uh, physical course, uh, has emphasized this a great deal, um, has involved things like tours of Flagler College and maybe other parts of St. Augustine. Uh, given that this is an online course, we're not able to do that. Um, but there are texts that may help us to think about the connection we have to this place, nevertheless. And so that will be, I guess, de-emphasized in this online class, but it will still be a component of it. And then finally, and really this is just a, a reiteration of some things we've already said, the ability to reflect, reflect critically on one's own identity, values, and worldview. Now, th there's an important distinction that we need to make here. Um, the texts that we'll be reading come out of a specific historical context. And so the first text, uh, well, we're going to read some in, kind of introductory articles first on liberal education. But we're going to read uh, a text written by an ancient Roman historian, somebody who lived, you know, 2,000 years ago. And uh, um, we need to appreciate, have some sense of that historical context. If we're able to, if we want to understand what Livy, that's his name, Livy, uh, means by some of the things that he says, we need to understand his context. But at the same time, uh, or maybe alongside that understanding, we also need to think about what the ideas that Livy or Columbus or Montaigne uh, or Shakespeare or Locke or Rousseau or the other texts that we'll be reading in this class, uh, what the ideas that they put forward mean for us, how we should apply them, how we should think about them, how we, how we should incorporate them into our systems of belief or not, uh, as it were. Um, how we should, uh, you know, engage these things critically. And so this course will function in some ways on two levels. Um, one is that it will attempt to understand the context of the texts that we read. Uh, and this will be delivered primarily through online lectures that I have uh, prepared and um, and will be posted each week uh, and that you're required to watch and, and uh, think about. Um, and uh, we may do some of this in discussion boards. We may talk about historical context. Um, uh, but then from there, we think about these things in connection with ourselves. We reflect, as it says, reflect critically on our own identity, our own values, and our own worldview. Uh, these ideas put forward in the text are the vehicle to help us do that critical reflection. Okay, so hopefully that is at least somewhat clear at this point. Again, uh, if you have questions about any of the, the learning outcomes, uh, bring it up in the discussion boards. Um, email me personally. Uh, you know, I look forward to having discussions about all of these things with you. Um, required texts. Well, there are six, um, and uh, some of these we will read in their entirety, some we will read only in part. Um, there are four books for the class that every single Keystone class that's ever been taught at Flagler College, I believe, has used. Uh, these are the ones we'll be using as, as well, and then professors have some latitude uh, to determine what uh, other things to supplement this with. Okay, so. Uh, we will all be reading William Shakespeare's play The Tempest, um, and uh, it doesn't matter really which edition you obtain uh, for this. Uh, I have sent out an email earlier uh, with a, a, a link to Amazon.com, uh, which has the, the edition that has commonly been used at Flagler, but you, you don't need to use that edition necessarily. Uh, I will, instead of referring to page numbers, I will try to refer to acts and scenes uh, so that everyone can be oriented there. Um, if you're hearing the train behind me, I actually am uh, uh, recording this at home and I live right next to the train tracks and so 
Uh, sorry for the background noise there. Uh, also, um, the uh, basic political writings of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Now, uh, that's a collection of several of Rousseau's works. The only one that we will be reading for this class is called The Discourse on the Origins of Inequality, or just The Discourse on Inequality. Uh, and so if you want to obtain the, I believe it's the Hackett, uh, Hackett Press edition of the Basic Political Writings, uh, that's a very good edition of this text. Um, uh, you don't need to obtain that necessarily. You can get an electronic version, or uh, this may be found online probably, uh, of Rousseau's text called The Discourse on Inequality. Um, same thing with John Locke. There is a Hackett edition of the Second Treatise of Government uh, that is, has been commonly used in this course. Uh, it's the one that I, you know, uh, have all of my notes in, uh, for instance. But you don't have to read that one. Uh, I know you can get electronic versions of this. Uh, you can probably find it online. So you're welcome to use that. And the same thing for uh, Torstein Veblen's The Theory of the Leisure Class. Um, and uh, again, there's a, a cheap edition, I think, put out by Dover Press uh, of this um, that has been used in, in the Keystone class, but you're welcome to um, uh, find another version of that if you like. And then there are two other books, and these are the ones that I have supplemented these basic readings with. Uh, George Orwell's uh, Exposé of Poverty called The Road to Wigan Pier. Um, I don't know uh, how many editions of that there are. I don't think this is available online for free or anything. Um, there is a very good edition of that that's not too expensive, though. It's only 10 15 bucks, something like that. Uh, and then, actually, this is a very recent book. Uh, it won the National Book Award last year. Uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' book called Between the World and Me, um, which is a, an extended discussion, a memoir about um, race, about what it means to be an African American in our contemporary circumstances. Um, and uh, so that's a book you need to obtain as well. I know that there is uh, there are electronic versions of this, um, or you can order, uh, you know, uh, a hard copy of it if you like. Uh, I think it's about twelve or thirteen dollars on Amazon, something like that. There will be other assigned readings. These are all posted to Canvas, uh, which is the uh, learning management system that we'll be doing everything in the course through. Uh, we're going to read um, again. I talked about Livy. Uh, we're going to read. Um, something written by Christopher Columbus. Uh, we're going to read an essay of Montaigne from the 16th century. Uh, we're going to read uh, uh, Martin Luther King's famous letter from Birmingham jail. Um, and so all of these uh, are, are posted on Canvas. You can obtain them very easily there. Course requirements. Um, there are three basic requirements of this course. And all of these uh, are you know, done electronically. Um, there's no need to ever synchronize our time to watch a lecture that I'm giving, you know, at a specific time. Everything will be done online. First of all, uh, for every week of the class, there will be a short writing assignment. Um, I have posted, or I, I will actually, I haven't gotten this done yet, but I will post uh, on Canvas for each week of the course, um, a, uh, a short writing assignment, um, some questions that I want you to answer as you read the assigned materials. Uh, this just asks you mostly to summarize um, the ideas presented in the texts. Uh, it's not necessary to write uh, a lengthy epistle about these things. Uh, a paragraph or two um, uh, per question will be sufficient. Um, uh, a paragraph does not mean one or two sentences, though. I do want you to spend a little time on this. Uh, but if you read and prepare, this should not be something that is overly onerous. Uh, the reason for the short writing assignments really is to help you uh, wrap your mind around the ideas presented in the text um, so that you can participate effectively in the discussion board. Now, at three points in the term, and th this term is six weeks long, um, 
And so every two weeks we have a critical analysis paper that will uh, be prompted. Um, it will uh, force you to um, engage the ideas that we've covered over the two weeks of the uh, of the course that we've covered. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, as it says here, the main goal of this course is to develop the capacity for effective, critical, self-reflective analysis. You will be required to write three analytical papers on the ideas presented in the assigned text, and uh, I will give you prompts with specific instructions uh, on those. Uh, the, the, the most um, basic assignment, the one that you will need to probably spend the most time on in this class, uh, really the, this is the equivalent of attending class and participating in class discussions, is the discussion board. This will be on Canvas. Um, I will curate these. Uh, and these will be responses to the class readings and online lectures. But um, for every week, um, I will post a kind of introductory uh, prompt for the discussion board for that week. Um, this, this prompt asks you to think about what you've read in the materials. Um, uh, it asks you to reflect on those things and to craft a response. This response is more than just summary. It says the, the student should extend the remarks well beyond summary of the assigned materials. I don't just want you to parrot back you know, what you read in Livy or what you read in Columbus or what you read in Shakespeare. I want you to think about these ideas. Again, this is where you get to be self, or you need to be self-reflective. You need to think about, um, sorry again for the background noise. Uh, I'm barricaded in my room, but I do have children uh, in the house. so. If you're hearing the background noise, I apologize. Um, uh, so beyond summary, uh, an active engagement in this. Uh, the discussion needs to be respectful, yet I also hope it is lively. I mean, I hope that you really think about the things that you're reading. Uh, in fact, it's required that you do. Uh, and the discussion boards, uh, your participation in the discussion boards will be graded really on your well, as it says down here, uh, the quality of your responses, how well posts engage the issues at hand, to a lesser extent the effectiveness of your writing. Um, I mean, I don't want you to just dash off you know, a response and post it on there like you're text messaging somebody. I, I do want you to craft these things, uh, at least to some extent. Well, what do you actually have to do here, uh, logistically speaking? Uh, every week, um, uh, in fact, this will um, be up on uh, Sunday, so the, the day before the week starts. Uh, each virtual week of the class runs from Monday to uh, to Sunday, uh, and so these the posts will go up on Sunday, and by Wednesday you need to give an initial post of at least 250 words. Um, it can be longer than that, uh, you know, I assume if you write uh, a novel length thing that your fellow students are probably not going to read that. And so, I mean, I want you to be succinct, uh, but I also want you to be uh, engaged uh, with the ideas. You will not be able to see the comments that anyone else writes, their initial posts, until you post yourself, uh, until you post your initial post. After you submit your initial post, again, this needs to be done by Wednesday of that week, uh, then you will be able to see others, and you're required, in addition to, um, uh, in addition to uh, the the initial post, to respond. I'm getting updates here again. To respond to your classmates' posts. Okay, you need to for each week of the course, or for each discussion board, I should say, you need to give three responses. You can do more than that. In fact, I would encourage you to be very actively engaged in this. Uh, your participation grade will depend on that. Um, but the, at the bare minimum, three well thought out responses to the posts of your classmates. Now, there is one week, in fact, it's the first week, where there will be two discussion boards. It's the only week of the class that's like this. Um, this is because we're, in, you know, we're engaging issues that are, are really quite disparate this first week, uh, and so there's an online discussion board uh, over the issue of liberal education and kind of the introductory 
materials of the course, and then there's a, an online discussion board um, about Livy and Columbus. Um, and so what this means for the first week is that you need to participate in two discussion boards. You need to uh, produce two initial posts of at least 250 words and a total of six responses. I know that that's a lot uh, right off the top, but this will get you accustomed to uh, the way the course will work. Um, I will say that the readings are uh, much lighter the first week, even though there are two discussion boards, uh, the, the readings are less lengthy than uh, at other points in the course. And so, you know, this, this second discussion board is not, I think, something that's overly onerous necessarily. Now, that first week, uh, the initial post must be made by Wednesday. Uh, for the first discussion board, you can wait until Thursday to make your initial post to the second discussion board. Um, but you need to have both of them done by Thursday and then all six responses by Sunday. I hope that that is clear. This, the first week, again, is the only one uh, that is July 5th through uh, July 10th. That is the only week where you will have to give uh, responses to two discussion boards. Uh, the other weeks will involve only one discussion board. Um, I do accept late assignments, uh, not in discussion boards. They will close, uh, you know, I mean, I may, I may leave them up, but uh, sort of the requirement is in the week uh, in question, you need to participate in the discussion board that week. Um, but uh, for the short writing assignments and for the critical analysis papers, I do accept late assignments. Uh, the one exception for this would be the last critical analysis paper because I have to uh, I have to submit grades only a couple of days after uh, those are uh, the, the due date for those. Uh, but there will be a penalty if you do turn in late work, um, uh, and you can see my policy there. Here's the grading scale, methods of instruction, two basic ones, online discussion boards and online lectures. That's it. Um, so you need to, you know, uh, access the class through through both of those. Your responsibilities are to complete the weekly assignments, that is the short writing assignments, and to participate in the online discussions, um, and uh, uh, also to complete the, the critical analysis papers. Attendance policy. This is different than the standard attendance policy because we're not actually going to class. If you do not participate in the first 10 days of the course, um, so that shouldn't be Monday because the class starts on Tuesday. So Tuesday, the initial Tuesday through the Thursday of the following week, you will be withdrawn for non-attendance. Um, if you are inactive for a seven-day period during any week thereafter, you may be dropped for excessive absences. That's how we'll keep track of things. If there is some extenuating circumstance, uh, now, participation is uh, defined as posting within the discussion board. Um, we don't have a wiki or a blog, uh, or, or, or submitting an assignment. So uh, to, to uh, show that you're participating, to show that you're attending, you need to, to post in the discussion board and submit the assignments. If you do have an emergency, please let me know via email, um, and uh, you know I'm certainly willing to make accommodations there. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, what else is important here? Uh, the virtual week is Monday through Sunday. I think I've already said that, and so each week will begin on Monday. The the exception there is the first week, which begins on Tuesday, but it still runs through Sunday, and the last week, which ends, it starts on Monday and ends on Friday, um, and so that's a bit shorter as well. Netiquette. Uh, these are real people you're interacting with. You may not see them, um, but uh, students are expected, as it says, to communicate in a professional, courteous, and respectful manner, demonstrating college-level correspondence in all modes of communication. Of course, that means you don't, you know, I don't want to see text messaging language uh, abbreviations, things like that, in your discussion board responses. Uh, in uh, if you send me an email, please try to maintain professional. Uh, or I should say college level correspondence. Um, uh, I will hold you to that. Um, and some of my feedback, you know, will be uh, relative to, to that level of discourse. 
You do need uh, computer and internet requirements for this class, of course. Uh, you need word processing software to, to write your papers. Uh, you need an internet browser. I don't care which one. I think it works, and Canvas works with all of them. Uh, I will post, in addition to giving the online lectures, which are really just PowerPoint voiceovers, I will post the PowerPoints if you want to go back and just refer to the PowerPoint. And so you would need a, a PowerPoint viewer um, for that. Uh, I think some of the components of this class require Flash, um, which is, of course, an online plugin. I assume if you don't have this, that your browser will tell you uh, that you don't have it or that you know, it's not Flash compatible or something. And you need speakers because you need to listen to lectures like this one. Academic honesty. Uh, this is the same policy as you have heard before. Uh, if you cheat, if you plagiarize, you will get caught. Um, I'm very good at catching people uh, at this. Um, and so uh, to, to ensure that students adhere to the standards of honesty, all written work, except for discussion board posts, must be submitted to turnitin.com. Um, if you don't know what this is, uh, please email me, but uh, it's very self-explanatory, very easy to register on this. The class ID uh, is there in bold. Um, the password is flagler16, sorry for the lack of originality. Uh, you need to register for the course on turnitin.com immediately. If you do not get registered for the course by July 7th, and I will check, I will stay up until midnight that night and count who's on there. You will be docked five points on the first critical analysis paper. That is 10%. So get this done. Make sure that you're registered. Um, if you have disabilities, uh, please contact the Office of Services for Students with Disabilities, and they will communicate with me uh, what uh, um, provisions need to be made uh, for you in the course. Now. The schedule. Um, this class is broken into three units, each of which uh, takes two weeks to complete, and then it's also broken into weeks, as you can see here. Okay, um, and so the course, to some extent, follows a narrative, um, though it may feel a little disjointed at times. We're going to begin by talking about liberal education. Now, keep in mind, these abbreviations are important. Anytime you see SWA here on the schedule, that is referring to these short writing assignments. Uh, anytime you see discussion, or DB, that's referring to discussion board. These are the requirements. Anytime you see CAP, that's the requirement of the critical analysis paper. Anytime you see OL, that means you need to watch one of these online lectures. Okay. So we're going to start by talking about liberal education, what that is. And so for the first week, you have two topics. Okay, Like I said, there are two discussion boards, two topics. There are also two short writing assignments, though these will be a bit shorter than the norm. Okay, And the, write, and the reading itself is not, uh, is not that onerous. And so for week one, uh, we're going to be talking about both of these topics, starting with liberal education. So. Uh, first thing you need to do is read the syllabus and watch the syllabus overview online lecture, which is exactly what you're doing right now. Um, uh, if you have questions about the syllabus, bring it up on the discussion board, okay, or email me. Then you need to read these three short articles. Now, I'm going to switch over to my browser here, okay. Um, I should have pulled this up beforehand. Uh, let me go to, sorry, don't know why it's not giving it to me. Okay, so go to the Keystone Seminar here, um, which is our course. And now the internet is being slow. Um, okay, so here we are. Um, now, Everything is posted here, okay. Uh, week one, topic one, and week one, topic two. You can see all of it here. Everything you need to do is posted there. You can also go to this tab called modules, which has all of it, okay. In fact, I've got all these things. I'm I'm still putting things in here, uh, still creating content, but um, uh, you know, all of these things are are posted here, and so you have. 
uh, the online lecture on liberal education um, is posted here. And so you click on that, and it will pull up uh, a YouTube video, which is me on a PowerPoint voiceover, just as you've done here. Um, and, uh, and then these are the three articles you need to read. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, complete that reading. Uh, and then I will also post here, I haven't gotten it done yet, but the short writing assignment. Uh, and so you need to go on there and, and uh, do that. And then you go here and begin to participate in the discussion board. Okay, so here's my initial post. Um, some questions that I want you to answer. You reply to this, and then you'll be able to see uh, the other students' comments, and you can reply to their comments. Okay, um, so that's uh, navigating the Canvas uh, website here is, is quite easy. Um, everything should be posted either on Home or, again, under the Modules tab. Uh, everything is in there. All right. Um, and you can see, uh, by the way, that here's one of the articles that you need to read uh, for that first week. It's only, a f it's not a very long article. It's just a few paragraphs, equivalent of maybe a few pages um, of, of reading there. Okay, so, um, so you need to read those. Uh, the OL, these are the online lectures, the syllabus overview, which is the current lecture that you're watching, uh, and the liberal education lecture. Um, and then these assignments, right? Uh, short writing assignment one by July 10th. Also in that first week, you'll have short writing assignment two to do, okay? Uh, and then discussion board called liberal education. Your first post needs to be made by July 6th, which is the day after the class starts, okay? Um, and then your three responses by the 10th, and then you also need to register on Turnitin.com by July 7th. Um, also in the first week, topic two, place in the other, part one, Livy and Columbus. You need to read uh, the Livy text. And you'll see these are not long. Um, so let's go back to the uh, course here. Um, so uh, here's the Livy online lecture, uh, but here is the Livy text, okay, so it'll ask you to download it, and I think it's only three or four pages, something like that, all right, so it's not very long, in fact, here it is, uh, you can see that it's uh, three pages, okay, well, I guess four pages, uh, so not not a terribly long thing, uh, and the Columbus letter is, is uh, a little bit longer than that, but not much, um, so, you know, watch the two online lectures, read these texts, complete the short writing assignment, participate in the discussion board, on to the next week. Now, blessedly, uh, after the first week, you only have one topic to deal with, one discussion board, one short writing assignment. Um, and so, you know, for that week, you need to read Montaigne's essay called On Cannibals. You need to read The Tempest. Um, this is where we get into the lengthier readings. Uh, watch the two online lectures, do the short writing assignment, participate in the discussion board, and then write the first critical analysis paper that is due by July 19th. So it's due two days after the week actually ends. I give you a couple extra days to do that, uh, but realize that you are already into the, the next week at that point and you need to, you know, uh, get going on, on the, your discussion board posts and your readings and things for the next week. Um, this class is truncated in its schedule. There are only six weeks of this class. It's quick. You need to stay on top of this. If you do, I think that you'll do just fine. Um, and you can see all of these things repeated uh, over the, uh, the course of the semester, um, the units here uh, with, um, uh, with the weeks within the units. Okay. Um, good. Well, I will, uh, uh, I assume, field questions from you via email, or I will talk to you on the discussion boards. I look forward to the course. Thank you.